One of the strangest books in the New Testament canon is, its very, is the very last one, known variously as the Book of the Apocalypse, the Book of Revelation. Many churches of the East don't even read it in their liturgy. They find it so unusual. But for many Western Christians, it's a problem, an enigma, a mystery, or indeed some sort of terrible warning. I have with me Dr. Margaret Barker, who's written extensively on the book of Revelation. Margaret, if you only, if you had only a couple of minutes, and that's all we have, what would you want to say to people about the book of Revelation, and particularly things like the bits where people say, oh, we're in this point in time, or the end times are almost upon us? Well, I would say that all of the book of Revelation, <coughs> up to and including chapter 19, is early Christian prophecy that was already fulfilled. And so what we have in the first parts of the book of Revelation, obviously the, the first uh, three chapters are the opening and then the letters to the early churches. But the rest of that is a series of visions and early Christian prophecies. And the role of John was to decide and to explain to people when those prophecies had been fulfilled. And if you look at the title of the book of Revelation, just the first verse of chapter one, and this is something that people tend not to read at all, these visions are the visions of Jesus. And John, being a close disciple, was told about these visions, maybe other people were too, and John was entrusted with interpreting these visions and saying when these visions, which were also prophecies, had been fulfilled. And you have a summary of these visions in Mark chapter 13, Jesus teaching about when Jerusalem would be destroyed. So in other words, when we read the book of Revelation, we shouldn't be talking about our future, no. but it's telling us about what we believe about the origins. It's the origins of Christianity. It's a very, very important glimpse into the first 40 years or so of the Christian community in its homeland and living through the terrible events that led up to the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, the scattering of so many people from their homeland. And these were the prophecies which they were in effect ticking off. So in other words, it's them making sense of their past and their experience. It's not to be read uh, like uh, Mystic Meg telling us what's going to happen in 100 years, 10 years or 100 years Oh time. no, it is not. Um, in its original context, it was the detailed version of the prophecies of Jesus that you find summarized in Mark chapter 13 and in other places as well. You'll find uh, the visions in Revelation 14 about the angel reapers and so forth. They appear as the parable of the angel reapers at the end of the age. So elements in the book of Revelation do actually appear as the teaching of Jesus in the Gospels. And this is why I suspect that summary of Jesus's prophecies, which you get in Mark 13, also Matthew and Luke, you don't get in John's Gospel because I think John was also responsible for the apocalypse. He didn't need to include it in his gospel because he had a second volume on that subject. And that leaves us with the, at the end of the book of Revelation, we have <clears throat> the great four square city. Yes. And the history of you know, Christianity has been people either thinking it's about to happen you know, Norman Cohn's famous mm. book, The Pursuit of the Millennium. Mm -hmm. And the millennium becomes this, the, 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 this sort of thing that you, maybe, you could, maybe you could start it off by doing something yourself. But actually what you're saying is that the four square city is a way of taking the whole imagery of the temple and mm -hmm. saying we have this in Jesus. Yes, and if you work it out in more detail, the golden city that John sees is a giant golden cube. 
So it's the giant golden cube of the Holy of Holies multiplied a huge size. And what you have in the heavenly city is the vision of the whole of creation becoming what the Holy of Holies had symbolized, which is the place that is illuminated by the light of God's presence, where there is no division, there is no death, there is no sickness, there is no pain, all these things. Now, in the temple, that Holy of Holies had been the place of the throne of God. And so in Christian discourse, this is called the kingdom of God. Everything you read about in the New Testament, the kingdom of God is like, or this is what the kingdom is. The kingdom is in the midst of you. That was the Holy of Holies. And everything they believed about the Holy of Holies, that you know the beings who lived there were angels and holy ones. This is how the Christians imagined the kingdom. I mean, all Christians are holy ones. We are all saints. You, you read the book of Revelation with immense experience as a pastor and a preacher and immense experience as a scholar. When someone tells you that they're calculating the end of the universe and, you know, the, the, these predictions, mm. what do you say to them? I say, come and have a coffee with me and we'll talk about this. Because, in fact, the reality is much more exciting much more reassuring and actually much more useful than some of these wilder uh, speculations. Margaret Barker, thank you for coming and talking to us here in Nottingham today. Thank you. <laughs>